Now, I would like to spend a few minutes talking about these constructors because they're confusing. So to do that, I'm going to create a brand new example. We're probably tired of using this dog example over and over again. So I'm going to make another example that's completely different from this. It's called a cat project. Here we go. And I'm going to create an abstract class called cat. And you can see that one of the options here is abstract class. The only thing it does really is put in the abstract keyword. And here, I'm going to clean out this boilerplate. And I'm going to create some variables here. So I'm going to create this variable called name. And I'm going to just leave it at that for now. And now I'm going to create a class that derives from cat. Uh, let's see. Can anyone name a breed of cat? Sphinx. I like it. OK, so let's create a Sphinx. I don't know if that's how you spell Sphinx, but uh, I'll just call it that. OK, so now the first thing we want to do is we want this Sphinx to have all the features of our abstract cat. So I need to do something with the Sphinx class extends cat. Just like if it was a regular concrete class, this is I extend an abstract class the same way. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say that the Sphinx is going to be my show cat. It's going to be like a fancy cat that I take to the cat shows. And I'm going to say that the Sphinx breed here is going to have some medals that it's going to win in some cat shows. Now, I'm going to create a constructor for the Sphinx. So I'm going to say public Sphinx. And I'm going to set the medals to be zero initially. and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to create some tester code. Let me just make sure this compiles. Yeah. And now I'm going to create some tester code. So I'll call this the tester. And inside here, I'm going to create a Sphinx. And I realize I need to have some getters and setters. So let me write that here just for a second. And while I'm at it, let me just put in the getters here for these two. OK, so getting back to my test code now, I'm going to print the metals. And let's just run all this code now for a second. And you can see it's printing the number of metals. Now, let's have a look at this other cat here. I'm going to turn this off for just a second. And let's try going cat C equals new cat. And my first question is, when I hit the compile button, am I going to be able to create a cat here? It will not allow me to create a cat. Why not? OK, cat is abstract. You see that, right? So if I try to create a new one, you can see it says the cat is abstract. It cannot be instantiated. So that's not going to be allowed. So here, what I want to know from you, and this is the question to see if you really kind of are starting to understand abstract classes. Number one, is it possible for me to have a constructor here? And number two, and number two, if I can, why would I ever need it if I can't create a cat? Mr. Diego, the first question, sir, is can I put a constructor in my cat class? The answer is yes. Let's put one in. We'll start with a full featured constructor. We'll go public cat string name int lives. So now we've got our full featured constructor for cat. It sets the names and the lives. Now can I go back and run this cat code and create a new cat? Let's try it. Still won't let me create a cat because it's abstract. So now my question to you is, why would I need this constructor? OK, in the Sphinx class, if I put in here a constructor, which I have, it's going to call cat's constructor. And here, I can specify the name of the cat. Uh, what would be a good name for a Sphinx cat? Maybe Nero. And the lives, I can set to nine. And now I'm going to just go back in here, and I'm going to add a two string so that we can print out the cat information. That's it like that. And then in the Sphinx class, what I will do is I will override like that. And so that will basically allow me to reuse the two string from the abstract class and then add in the metals part here like that. So let's see if all this works in my tester code now. Create this Sphinx cat, and I'm going to print it out. So let's run that. 
and you can see I've got all my information here. I'd like you to make a modification now to the, to the Sphinx constructor. I would like you to convert this into a full featured constructor where I pass everything in here, including the name, the lives, and the number of metals. And I'd like you to rewrite this part here also. Please do that now. Okay, Mr. Jimenez, sir, can you help me fill out this constructor so that it becomes full featured instead of zero argument? All right, so if I create this as a full featured constructor now, uh, it's going to be called with the name, the lives, and the metals information. I'm going to pass the names and the lives on to the constructor for cat. Notice that in this case, I'm making full use of that cat constructor, even though it's contained inside an abstract base class. See that? I still need that cat constructor here. And then the metals is something that only belongs to the Sphinx breed. So that part I consume locally. And so now we're going to go back to the tester code and we need to put in the information here. I'll, this time I'll name the cat hero. And we'll say that the cat maybe is born with like uh, seven lives and three metals. Let's run it. And you can see here, Here's all the information for our hero cat. So just as a summary, an abstract base class is like an unfinished oil painting. You can have some methods that are abstract and some methods that are concrete or filled in. Now look at this abstract class I made right here called cat. Does it have even a single abstract method? It does not. So you are not required to have abstract methods in an abstract class, but you could have one. So, for example, if I was to put in an abstract method here like this, you can see now that this class has introduced an abstract method. Is the Sphinx code going to compile right now? Okay, so I have not written now the meow method, and so I would have to come back in and write that. And now you can see I'm okay again.